Hi, um, just tell me your name please and, and uh, what you do and, and about the company and your aircraft. Yeah, my name is Thomas Müller-Shift. Um, I've um, designed originally the P2 uh, as a Quater aircraft back in the day. From started that project 2010 and then developed a racing plane starting 2020 approximately. So we've done two electric aircraft and now through the Elfley Group we're doing a third uh, 10 seat amphibious electric commuter aircraft. So it's a big step step up from the GA stuff we've done before. Mm. Yeah, and we're in um, Norway, of course, sunny Norway. <laughs> yeah, moment. today, yeah. yeah. Um, and particularly suited for the domestic market here. I think that's the kind of idea because you're going to be an operator. As of well. course, I mean, yeah. uh, our interest is also based on the ge geography of the country. A uh, lot of fjords, complicated transportation systems, very expensive to build roads and railroads. So. The seaplane, it started out in Norway in the 50s. It went quite well, but after all the, the runways and the network was built out, it, it disappeared due to cost and, uh, and efficiency, you know. And now we've got a situation where this new technology is allowing us to maybe bring something back because there are a lot of munis municipalities that are left out of the equation when it comes to transportation. So driving, you know, get in your car, do something, you're sitting there for two hours no matter what go to the doctor, go to the airport, yeah. whatever it might be. So there's, there's hundreds of cases where the routes are very short, where we can do something with this, this aircraft. So that's exciting. And you mentioned the, the P2 uh, seaplane that you, that you developed, so you, 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 um, you were behind. Um, what kind of key learnings from that did you take? A, a lot of the team have moved from that project and onto this next one. Um, could you yeah. describe some of that for me, please? Yeah, so you, you also heard the presentation that the, the, com the level of complexity on that plane was extremely high. We, we tried so many new things in the same package that it took several years more than it had to in terms of doing a commercial product. So. Um, looking back, of course, it's a little bit unfortunate because that was some, to, I kind of view it as sort of a failure. But then again, you know, we went through that, we built that, and that knowledge is now being utilized. And what you've seen today is sort of a result of the team doing that work. Okay. So I can't really say that it's not successful today after an event like this. But then again, it's, uh, it's not a commercially viable plane right now, right? right. Yeah. So looking at the at the new aircraft that you're working on now, you know, what do you see as the most sort of kind of interesting technical points or really difficult challenges that you're looking forward to solving? <laughs> yeah, so, so we, we uh, like every other company doing electric planes, need to look into uh, drag uh, uh, in a big way, right? Try to make, try to find the best possible speed to, the, to, to allow it maximum range. Yeah. So the aerodynamics is all based on energy efficiency, right? And of course, everybody thinks about that when they design planes, but the combustion technology has allowed us to make successful products, even if they fail a little bit on that, because you still have a lot long range. For electric planes, it's different. If you fail on 10% of it, you might fail on the whole business case. So it's extremely important we hit the mark aerodynamically. And of course, being a seaplane, we have the hydrodynamics as well. We need to use less energy getting out of the water, which means low drag hulls and research into, into that kind of thing as well. And that's the stuff we've been doing for the last uh, two years odd, uh, testing uh, subscale hulls and things like that. Uh, just one final question. Um, so, and it's, it's a bit of a tricky one really. I feel a bit unfair. What asking it but do you, um, you know, what makes you think you're going to succeed where the you know where the P2 you know compared to the P2 I mean obviously there's a, it's, there's a lot more commercial pressure this time and you know there's a it's, product. Uh, you're, you're, you're absolutely right and and this is always balancing on knife edge in terms of motion right mm -hmm. because to a certain degree me coming from GA and these experimental things and not having done any big planes before definitely feel like a certain amount of imposter syndrome to a certain degree, right? Some days. But also having been through the process where you've thought up something in your mind and you've seen it, put it on paper and then developed it and flown it, it opens up that mind space to think that anything is possible. You just have to be able to formalize it on the table, on the paper, 3D. And then, so honestly, 
the complexity of the P2 makes me think that this new airplane is actually going to be easier to create okay. because we're reducing the amount of complexity to the absolute minimum and